but you know, I'm a little spooked because of the light, but I have this one light. It's really cool. You can get it at Home Depot. You plug it in. It's way better. It's like brilliant light and you can take it outside. You can charge it and then just take it outside and it lights up the whole area because even at that though, I'm afraid where I step. Please, please be because it'll yeah. keep you alive. <laughs> We'll keep. I'm like a little monkey, though. I can I can maneuver about anywhere. Oh, good, good, <laughs> good. The I had a a drill sergeant, maybe a training sergeant. I'm not sure if they was a drill sergeant at this point in Rome. I'm not even sure no more because I had so much training. I'm not sure you know, what was drill sergeant, what was not. But we were being trained to do all sorts of cool things. That's cool now, but it up then and they would train us how to jump out of helicopters you know perfectly working helicopters you know. <laughs> and, and one of the guys one of, one of the, the sergeants said and if you get up here you're not nervous you need to quit let us know and you need to you know change the MOS because that's the that's the day you're gonna die right <laughs> so, I never forgot that. Go ahead, Susie. Yeah, you know, our son's an airborne MP. Oh well, see. It, yeah, and it really got his knees jumping out of the airplanes. But he now just became a certified. You know, he's been working towards a CrossFit trainer. Oh, you should right. see. He can. He can lift, deadlift, like tons of weight. He's he's very very strong. That's his thing. And he's but, got some uh, cardio on him too. Oh yeah, he can do it all. Wow. And I, you know, he started with me and I remember at the Y, the, he, he worked at our, we had a brand new Y in our town come and so he got a job there and he ended up um, training, you know, at whatever, 16, 17, my friends that went there, you know, the lady wow. friends were there and they would be asking him all kinds of questions and things like that he was just 16 17 wow he, he was winging it at that time <laughs> that's amazing that is amazing yeah he is your son is extremely accomplished him and jerome i just did my job got my security clearance shut my mouth and got out of there yeah you would have been at that rank too if you would have stayed in oh you know? yeah yeah, yeah if i'd have stayed in yeah, I was going to stay in. I was a lifer. Some in the last six months, I decided to to call it quits. The last six months, I knew, I knew I was going to leave. Well, I was debating, and then one day I was just riding home, and a song came on. You know, you know how you make those life make life altering decisions in the middle of a song, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and not, you know, change my duty station. Because we were going back anyway, so it, it was, it was good. I had a blast. I, I had a blast. I spent ninety percent of my military career in the field. <laughs> so. You're on another mission now. Yeah. <laughs> you got yeah, another definitely. mission that we're all glad that you have. <laughs> I so appreciate you. I so appreciate you, so, Jerome. You know how it is, man. Ninety percent. Of my my career was in the field. the The best way I could explain the army was the the days were long, but the months were fast. Yeah, definitely. Days were long. They never ended. They never ended. It never ever ended. But then come up, and I was. You know, ETS, <laughs> you know, get that in term, in term service. Is that what ETS stands for, Jerome? I think so. In term service. So, what is it? Yeah, he knows. Estimated term of service. Ah, there it is. 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 All right, there you go. Well, I got I my DD two fourteen. That's ETS. I retired. You retired. Ah, there you go. See that. But but you know, it's interesting you say that. Every time I came up for enlistment, I contemplated whether I was going to stay or go. Yeah. Because it was one of those things of people saying, well, ain't nothing out there. Ain't nothing. So, 
to you. You're telling me the only thing I can do for the rest of my life is the military. You crazy. You a lie. I, I, I don't receive that. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But I take, but I take that check now. Don't, don't, don't get Oh, oh, oh I'm, it, it, it goes to the bank every, every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you earned that check. Look, if anybody earned a check, it is someone in the military. For real. Yes. <laughs> and they take taxes out of our stuff, too. Don't get it twisted. Oh, taxes yes. and pay social security. All that. They snatch all that out. You would think they say, oh, you ain't got to pick shoe. <laughs> they take taxes out of that. No matter what your job is, they take taxes exactly. out. And I've done some stuff, y'all. I've done some stuff that was, I've done some stuff. That it's, it's really cool to talk about now, but let me tell you. <laughs> I've done some stuff. Nevertheless, well, let me just say one more thing. I've got people that don't even know I speak English. So I've done some stuff. <laughs> I've done some stuff. Yeah, so if you know anything about, I don't even know if I can say that. <laughs> I don't even know if I could. So, yeah, no doubt. Well, today and moving forward for quite some time we're thinking about telling the right story and getting the right leads that's where we at okay thank you jerry he he thanks you for your service to rome jerry thanks you for your service man. telling the right stories getting the right leads now if you have a speaking background you kind of got a leg up here okay you kind of got a leg up here. If you know how to do a keynote, you 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 are right. You are right. You know how to do a keynote, you are right. Now, let's see. Let me explain to you what's happening. Besides the fact that it is go time, right? Besides that, besides that, what's happening is you're building a solid foundation. You understand? Now, this is this is what I had to, and listen, I don't care who you are, we all suffer from this, and we have to have practice behavior so we don't suffer from this. We all want our blessings, and we want them right now. You understand? <laughs> all right. But without a foundation, you have no blessings. I just need you to get that. Okay. <laughs> I need you to get that. Think about building the tallest building in your city. For about two years, yeah, or, or for a very long time. I'm not I'm not an engineer enough to know how many years or months, but for a very long time, that construction site will just look like dirt and nobody's working for a very, very long time. Because you're drilling in the ground and making solid a foundation. And the deeper your foundation goes, the more both is both here, but the more flexible this tall building becomes, and the more it's inflexible the words. Is that a word? We're going to make it work. And the more inflexible that building becomes, you need both. The building can't just stand. It must vibrate and it must sway. But it can't sway so much it breaks, but it needs to sway so it doesn't break. You need foundation for that. Now, what's all this talk? If you tell a good story, that's your foundation. I was going somewhere the whole time. The, the, the whole time, I, I was going for the whole time. If you tell a good story, that's your foundation. Why? Because a good story gets good leads. I'm starting to make some sense here. And you want to build your organization, your companies, your success teams, whatever you're building, with the right customers and the right leadership. Now, I'm talking. 
You do not want customers you don't feel like serving. Come on, Diana. Come on, unmute your mic. You had a reaction. Yeah, Come man, on. Let, let them hear about the mistakes you've made. Who, me? Diana got it. Okay. Because she, she built this way with her music company. We, we listening to you embarrass yourself. Go ahead. So first off, even when you build your company, you always have to understand there are going to be those clients, but you don't have to, you don't have to choose those clients. I didn't think I had a choice. While in my head, I'm like, I'm a management company, so I get to choose my clients. The same thought in my head was just get clients. And in the process of doing that, I was working on the shadow side of my story. I was working on while I wanted to help other help other artists get on stages, help other artists get their music out there. In the same token, I was also working with my own personal growth of you don't know enough. You don't know this. You don't know that. So I was just choosing clients who my friends sent my way. So these would have been ideal clients for my friends, but not for me. And then the, the when I did get the ideal client, they ended up behind bars. So I got the typical artist. So I'm sitting here like... I don't want these clients. <laughs> like, I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I literally got the stereotypical artist, the ones with egos, the ones who thought their talent was so big that people should have just flocked to them. The ones who didn't want to work for it are the ones who, who had everything I needed to make them grow, but ended up in jail. I was like, I don't want these people. <laughs> I don't want these artists. And so when you said that, I was like, Antonio truly and honestly coached me into a position of learning the importance of picking your customers. Because while they are your customers, you still have the choice. And then how to properly pick them based on my story. I, yes, I wanted to help. I wanted to help with artist development, but I also had to understand that the field I was in was dying. So I was getting the, the dying aspect <laughs> of the industry. <laughs> and then, oh, thank you, Jerry. That's what that's called. Oh, that makes so much sense now. That's what I call it. I don't know if that's what it's called, but oh I, just, I've met so many of those people. Losers. Yeah, so many of those people. I like that. <laughs> and they don't, and, and the hard part is they don't feel like they've got to put the work in to get to where they need to be. That once they record one song that's not mixed down, that's not like they didn't understand the steps of recording i actually did even though i've never touched a board in my life i can i've sat there and watched licensed engineers work i've seen them take the actual music itself and mix down and master just the music and then they have to go in and mix down and master the vocals and then they have to put it together and mix down and master that but they think once they just record one time on some music that that's, and I'm sitting here like, no dude, that's not gonna work. I can't do nothing with that. But this is it. This is the, the but it ain't finished. <laughs> like, or either I'm like, okay, so give me three songs that I can start pushing and marketing while you go and finish your album. Man, you know, but I've been having a hard time trying to get in the studio or I got the hookup, let's go and we in the studio and y'all ain't doing nothing. What am I supposed to do with this? Like this, and I'm sitting here like, I don't want these clients. I don't want these clients, but I was also attracting the clients I didn't want. I had learned that later on down the line too. But once Antonio, once I redirected 
once I changed my story that I was telling myself, I was able to change the clients that I was attracting. So once I changed, once I changed just staying focused on music, once I realized I just want to help people get their dreams started. I really want to help people go from the beginning, walk them through, get them to where their dreams are and just let them just go have fun. That's what I wanted to do. And I can do that in any industry. Once it, once I changed the story I was telling myself about myself, I was able to get the clients that I actually wanted, like the Antonios and the Les Browns and getting the internships with Matthew Knowles. I was able to do those kind of things. But as long as I was lying to myself about the story I was telling myself, I couldn't, I could, I was always getting the clients I did not want. <sighs> I know that was long winded, Antonio. I'm so sorry, but there was just so much to that. <laughs> you me up. You sped me up. All that happened because she wasn't telling the right story. Antonio, mm -hmm. can you tell us, you said it earlier, you said it when the meeting was started, it's like the topic or the theme, you, you told it to us in that. Tell the right story, get the right leads. Build or tell? Build the right story, you said? No, tell. Build tell a the, solid foundation. Yeah, build a solid foundation is what I was saying, because exactly okay. but that's where this company is that's where we're doing now a lot a lot more we gotta tell the right story listen to what Dion said i'm in management i don't need to be managed now nah, y'all ain't heard me i don't need to be managed i'm not even you even said she was a manager that would turn me off that's too low I don't need to be managed. I don't need. I don't need to be managed. I'm looking for connections. How close is you to Oprah? You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, like, like, do you know Trump? We we know Obama. Like, tell me who's in your cell phone because we need. You know, I need access. I, I don't need management. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> management equals babysitting. I did not want to be a babysitter. Now, think about this. That was the story you was telling. It was on your business cards. It was all out there. And so you got people who wanted to be managed. You got a bunch of men who wanted women to take care of them. Do, do, do. Or women who knew everything. I'm going to stay out of that one. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the men. It's okay. No, no, no. We can this open this up. We can open this up because trust and believe. If you are in any type of coaching field um, or anything like that, if you don't change the story you tell yourself, you will get people who, who know they know more than you when they actually don't know anything and tell you how to do your job. If they knew more than you, then you would be they client. Go I ahead, Susan. I understand these things, but not everybody. Well, you know, what you can do now is set your mission statement and all that for how the type of clients you want and, and only accept that. Like for us, we really didn't have that too much because, you know, ours is creating results through enjoyable solutions, assisting in the enjoyment of everything, humor, consultants. So, you know, we didn't attract people like that. Now, sometimes um, they would want us, but then the meeting person that we had to work with was a little bit negative. And, you know, we had to work around that and overcome that. But for the most part, you know, when you're creating your business now, and, and I know, Deanna, that's what you're doing. And that was great learning experience for you personally. And as you work with um, other people here, you know, setting up their businesses so you want to make sure you have that intention and you have that um in you know your description of your business when you when you start it no doubt no doubt all accurate all accurate now of course i'm leaving a lot of stuff out one susan just brought up some i'm leaving out you know i'm leaving up out your mission statement your vision statement she even alluded to you know you attract what you are I'm leaving all that out because it's not something 
or that well, we'll just be here for 16 weeks breaking that down, you know. <laughs> we'll be here for 16 weeks. Reese, I think I heard you. I heard somebody on the phone. Oh, yeah, there she go. Did you want to say something, Reese? Um, well, I was going to say, you don't necessarily attract what you are. You attract the complement to your dysfunctional narrative. So it's like the dark side of the yin and yang. No doubt. No doubt. So I've got no I've got no disagreement with that. Now, leaving all the philosophical stuff out the way, because once you get that, then how do you show people that, right? Like this is this is where I get on stage. I'm a motivational speaker. Now, if y'all don't know enough about me, I have a very motivational speakers give me a headache. Okay, they give me a headache. Unless you're gonna give me the tools, don't give me the motivation. All right, that's that's me. That's just like, like don't don't pump me up, and I don't know what to do with it. So here I am. I'm gonna give you all the philosophical stuff and tell you, yep, it's it's who you are. Yep, all that stuff. But then you go, okay, Antonio, I got it. Now, how do I craft my content? Right? Is this is this not a next logical step? How many of you know how to produce a video right now that will tell the story the way you want to tell it to get the lead the way you want? See, there's the other half of this thing, right? Jerry said he's got it. Go ahead. Oh, you you got it okay good good hey, Antonio, yes um I know how to use the materials that I have mm -hmm. the Les Brown materials when I took his course mm -hmm. I love those courses it's a matter of I think the transparency needs to happen in my life first because I'm a believer That's facts. that you you can't give something away that you don't have. I like experience. I believe that experience is the best teacher. If I'm going to teach you on how to become wealthy, wealth is not always money. It could be in your health. It can be, I'm just using that as an example. And I can only speak from the level where I'm experiencing it. it at. That's right. And That's right. I'm definitely choosing to reach more and more towards healing as I build my business. So let me ask you a few questions because you're, you're mm -hmm. on it. <clears throat> you take whatever's in your life and wherever you have massive wealth at, mm -hmm. whether it be healing, I just overcame mm -hmm. this, I just beat cancer, or whatever that may be, and that's where you stick at. So my question to you is, what areas in your life are you experiencing wealth? Now, that's where I believe I'm on your call for. Okay, got you, got you, got <laughs> because you. Because you are going to help me establish and develop that. I'm actually about to do it on this call right now. So All look right. at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you're very welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank yeah, you. that's good. So this is this is the tell a story. Right. And get the right leads. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Good stuff. Yes. Good stuff. Thank all right. Now, all of you, I want you to, and I talked on the phone with you, didn't I, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I, okay. All right. All right. That's all I did. Okay. Good. It's vast me the same person as Vanessa? All right. All right. All right. See, yes. I, I know. Vi all right. Got it. Yes, all right. I know Vanessa. Vanessa. Yeah. All right, all right, I got you. All right, then. All right, then. All right. I, I remember our whole conversation. I still remember the first conversation I had with Carol. Yeah. So good. All right, here we go. We This company is... Oh, I got a private message. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Thank you, Grace. All right, excuse me, Ron, but I feel so right. like um, when it really comes down to all of this, I feel like we fall to the victim thing of making him or herself excuses. It's not actually getting it done. Like, I use me for a cool example. Honestly, I, I feel like running, but I know to get the results I wanted, I had to get myself up and get it done. I feel like that applies to life. 
business in any part of life and comes down to it, instead of waiting for somebody to do it for you. Bro, not only are you right, but let me bless you. I don't know if y'all know this, but I got a millionaire mindset. I'm working on a billionaire mindset. I never be running and listening to me. You understand? <laughs> with this mind. So not only is you backing up what you said, but you can be listening to anything. <laughs> and you learning a new body while learning a new mind. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Just do it. That's it, man. That's it. Now, let me cut across the field and cut backwards. You don't have to have everything to give someone everything. You just need to know what you know. And, and anything can be monetized. But before you monetize anything, you need to have the right story. Don't let me fool you and tell you, oh, yeah, it was business system. It is. But without a story, I can't even help you. I can't. It's just one of the first things I would have to address in the first place. Your brand is a story that people have related to. If every time you do an event and somebody gets raped and molested, I don't care what your product is, your brand, your story is, every time you do an event, somebody get raped and molested. Do you understand? Now, I know I picked an emotion. Hello? Yes, ma'am. In talking with Vanessa, you know, um, in the course that she liked to teach that, you know, I helped her with before on, what I was sharing with her is the hook story pitch. And she, you know, um, revealed, you know, different situations that she's had. And I said, she needs to integrate her own stories in there. It's her stories, which is what you're talking about here. It's her own personal stories um, to oh, yeah. read in to make the points. And that's what she's just starting to come to the realization about and gathering her stories together. Yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, gonna have to, let, let me just, thank you, Susan. I'm, I'm about to jump right on that. Nobody liked Les Brown until he had to take a bird bath in the top building, until he was the dumb twin. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, don't get it twisted. Nobody liked him. Nobody liked him until he had to go beg for a job and keep coming back and checking on that same job. And they keep coming back. Go on in there and fix me some coffee. You, you, you know these stories, right? You know what I'm talking about. Nobody, but nobody liked Les until that happened. Nobody liked Lisa Nichols until she was a teenage pregnancy with some knucklehead broke how did she say it with a fail in english nobody liked me until i was in a trash can there is a correlation here if you're not transparent i don't know why i like you <laughs> no one likes perfect people <clears throat> i roll up on Patricia. I invite Patricia, because Patricia's a church folk, so I'm going to use her church example. I invite Patricia to church, and I say, listen, Patricia, I am perfect. I already messed up having them. <laughs> I, I had some old stuff after it, but the way I saw everybody's face go, wait a minute now, right? <laughs> I already messed up. I am perfect. And should you want to be like me, you need to join my church. No. No. <laughs> so don't let your brands <laughs> do that either. Human beings have always killed perfect things. Always. 
I pushed that further. We had the garden eaten. It was perfect. Yeah, we messed that up too. How about that? Everybody likes a superhero story. <laughs> I'm getting his butt whooped and coming back. You understand. Hey, understand. Antonio, yes, uh -huh. I'm just now getting to a place Come on now. where I'm ready to tell Good. my story. Good. You know, and um, I just wrote down, I was tore up from the floor up. Mm -hmm. Okay. At 12 and 13 coming up, you know, so my story is being a recovered substance abuse addict. Okay, you got a story. Yes, I do have a story. Didn't want to tell it because I always wanted to maintain that sweet little person. Man, I that's gone. Want you, I, yeah, it's gone now, Chris. <laughs> but it's all right. But no, I'm no. healing. He said it's from gold. He said gold. Oh, it is gold. 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 See? Yeah, yes. I'm running. Excuse my pronunciation. See? Okay, no problem. Shame base. Yeah. I came up in a household. What went on in my mama's house stayed in my mama's house. Come on now, talk in this place. Okay. So, Sound like you're black. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Got grease on me too. Okay. That's it. <laughs> and 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 uh, what my pastor used to say, y'all all greased up and broke. I know that's right. Broke, but broken spiritually, you mm. know. So my healing process is always beginning. Mm, mm, I'm mm, doing mm, some mm, therapy mm, with a addict who's a recover addict who has ministry to some degree. I'm meeting with him this evening. Good. Do you know how that blessed me this morning to find out that I have an appointment with someone who referred me to a an addiction psych psychiatrist? Mm. Because I, I need to get in here. I need to figure out, why did you do that stuff? Mm. You know, what was your problem? Why did you want to destroy yourself? Mm. But I didn't know I wanted to destroy myself or kill myself, you know. Um, it's just was, the dumb was you, stuff. Was you destroying yourself? Or were you trying to destroy what was wrong with you? Could have been. I don't know, Antonio. You, you give me something to think about. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, listen. This is what I want you to do. I okay. want you. This is what I want you to do. Because uh -huh. what you just said was perfect. Listen, y'all. Okay. Stop having it together. I want okay. you to pick up your camera, get on okay. Facebook, All and right. I want you to say, "Hey, everybody. My name is Vanessa." Mm, you told and me to do that before. <laughs> I have got to start doing it. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what you just said, because mm -hmm. what you just taught, so both of my parents are, are, are drug addicts, mm -hmm. what you just taught me okay. was you could be sweet and innocent mm -hmm. and on drugs. Yeah. Drugs don't make you the bad stuff they say. Yeah. Sometimes sweet and innocent people get lost. Yeah, that was the shame. The, the mm. shame base. Mm. You know Father. how many sweet and innocent people who are lost right now because something happened to them that you can save right now. All right. Mm. You could be the voice of the sweet and innocent. I didn't think anybody would be interested. You know. <laughs> And I Isn't want you to something? keep that theme. I want you to. I want you to keep that. I, I hope. I hope what you just said hurts you mm -hmm. because I want you to say it it's every day. It almost make me want to cry. Okay. I want you to say it tell every day. You're the greatest. <laughs> yes. Tell yourself the greatest every day. Listen. He okay. right. He right. But listen. This I want you to do. Okay. I want you, without a doubt, to know that if you feel that way, mm -hmm. they do too. Wow. Okay. You understand? And listen, yes. don't don't even have the solutions. Okay. Just say, hey, yeah, I'm a recovering addict. <laughs> I didn't think nobody wanted to hear my story. Okay. But I'm telling it anyway. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm okay. Sorry. I almost <laughs> lost myself. Okay. I almost lost myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm telling it anyway. Okay. And oh even if it come out, even if I stutter, it's still going to come out. Mm. 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 You understand what I'm saying? Even yes. if I don't have it together, it's still going to come out. Because I am Vanessa and I'm coming out. I'm coming out. <laughs> come on, Sugar <laughs> Delaw. <laughs> I'm Vanessa, coming out. Yes. Vanessa, I just yes. want to congratulate you. Thank for you. What it is 
doing. I want to congratulate you because what you're doing is not easy. I want to congratulate you because you now know that you are ready. That God has opened up that shameful door to where that doesn't exist anymore. It's, you didn't go through what you went through for you. You went, you went through what you went through for someone else that is still lost. And I want you to know that I want you to tell your story on my TV channel. Oh, hey. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Look at that. You heard her. Yes. <laughs> All right, y'all make sure y'all exchange contacts. There All right. it is. Look, thank look, you. Look, look. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know what he got instructions to give, give me. <laughs> sugar, no, sugar, no, sugar. Sugar already. She sent you the instructions first and didn't yeah. say what she, I understand. I understand. Sugar said what she said. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, right. Susan, for leading me, me here. That's it. <laughs> Thank You're you, Antonio. Come out Thank on you. stage to the song I'm Coming Out. Like All that. right. That's uh, my song. I'm Coming Out. That's, that's going to always be my theme song. That's okay. It. That's it. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Let me tell I'm you. I'm coming out. That's it. We Come on, Law. It. Come on. Put, put, give me some of that chocolate swag woo, you got there, Law. Come on, yeah. give it to me. <laughs> well, rising, great rising. I just wanted to say, Vanessa, don't you, Thank you ever be shameful of your story. I am a product of addiction. My mother is nearing in. Her, I think it was her 25th year might be this year or 24th or what have you. Yeah, Law grew up in yeah. foster care. Yeah, that's how she lost her kids. She lost her kids through addiction and what have you. And my mom started out as a very accomplished woman and then lost wow. everything. So it can happen to anybody. Addiction is a universal language that knows no gender. It knows no, right. no color, no creed, no nothing. It can affect wow. anyone. But your story can always save a life. And I've always been proud of my mother that she, yes, she went through what she went through. She's never been shameful of saying that she is a recovering addict and so many people are inspired by her story because she's came so far. It's uncommon to hear that a mother who has eight kids, five grew up in foster care, and she came back and got custody of all five children. Woo. So your story can save someone. Don't you ever be Thank afraid you. to tell that story. It's an amazing Thank you, Lord. story. You've been through so much, and yeah. someone needs to know Thank that. You. And currently, yeah. we're dealing with a family member who is an addict and would have never imagined that he would have went down that route because of our upbringing, but he is. Wow. It knows no language. Thank you tell so you much. Something, man. Thank you. First, let me tell you, Lord, you gave me chill. Let me tell you two okay. things. For one, my mama never came back for me. No disrespect to her. Mm. But every time Law say that, I'm shocked wow. because my world view is when you get on crack. I don't know no other drugs. Ain't okay. ain't no other drug, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, yep. but crack cocaine. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Heroin. Evil. Yeah, yeah, you get Evil. off heroin. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I ain't <laughs> never seen somebody recover from crack. One person I saw recover from crack, Steve, real mm. name, was his name, and we was working construction together, and he started making money and went right back to crack. Wow. Okay. I ain't never seen. No, I know God can do anything. You understand me? Mm -hmm. But I ain't never seen somebody get off crack, Patricia. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, I know somebody has somewhere. But every time Lord reminds me that his mama got off mm -hmm. and came back and got them, it shatters my worldview. And I need it shattered every time he tell it. You understand? Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if I need that, you know how many other people out there need that? That's deep. When you tell your story, hold on, look like Sugar wanna say something. Go come on, Sugar. I, I'm not I ain't stopping. Go this ahead. Must be your day, Vanessa. But I'm just gonna share quickly. I am a recovered crack addict. I smoked Got crack for 13 years. Oh. I've been clean and sober. Well, I was addicted at all drugs, prostitution, and everything for 31 oh. years. But oh. cocaine was 13 years right oh. there. Most of it was in Galveston, Texas. Oh. Right on 6th and K. She and, still uh, got a full nine number. <laughs> <laughs> Our daily bread, that was the trash can I was in. Oh, but my God. Once yes. you have that made up mind to live, 
you want others to live also. You can't save them all, but those that God puts in your path, which is going to be what your story is. I've been clean and sober. I've got three books uh, out on my Shattered Mirror series that's on Amazon, which is my testimony. But I'm telling you, it's not about what I went through. It's about what others are going to experience from what I went through. And that's, wow. that's, that's what brings me. Awesome. And, and yes. Paul, your mother, you. you know, I, I give you a lot of respect because yes. you made that decision mm -hmm. to tell it. Yes. You made that decision to live a different life. Mm -hmm. And you made that decision with what God put in your heart yes. that you're going to help others. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I think all this ATS is all about. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Thank you. No doubt. Now, eight, I got so much to say. ATS is it's the only real thing I've ever done in my life. How about that? How about we start there first? Okay. Let's, let's start at it's the only real thing I've ever done. Anything else was on some I'm going to be famous stuff and I'm going to manipulate my way there. No, no, I ain't the only one that can relate to that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to be rich. I'm going to manipulate my way there. Uh, hold on. Come on, Jerry, because I, I know you got something to say. Come on, man. Oh, you just muted it. I <laughs> it's going to come out. We're going to pull it out you before you <laughs> before it's over. <laughs> It's the only real thing I've ever done. Now, I had an option. And basically, I crafted the story this way. I only want profitable, broken people that's tired of where they are and to do anything that they can to get past it. You understand? That's all I want. Uh, if you, you know, if you got everything together, you ain't my target audience. If you ain't trying to do nothing, please don't even fill out a form over here. I can't, I can't relate. You're not going to like me. You're just not going to like me because I'm going to let you know that you tripping. You're not going to like me. And I don't have time for people like that. I only want the people who say, I know I got something in me and I didn't have some success and I done fooled around and let somebody else hold back my success. Can anybody relate to that? Is this? I know y'all woke, but you know, if you're not, if you're not careful, people will knock the praise the Lord right out of you if you're not careful. I don't know. If Say you, that again. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you, I know y'all tough, but as for me, they will do that. Believe that. These are the people. And as a consequence of telling that story, I attracted a bunch of y'all great, honest, hungry, successful, and on their way to more successful people. And then I attracted the people who say, well, listen, we got these resources we would like to help. And I got a whole network of those two co-mingling pieces. It's why you can come in ATS and get almost every, it's why Sugar just said, I want you on my TV show. You understand, Vanessa? It's, it's, it's what we've done here. But yeah. how did I craft that story? See, it's not enough just to write it down. It's not even enough to declare it. Remember, I keep telling y'all, prayer is one part of it. But that ain't how you get stuff. That's how you ask for stuff. <laughs> it's not how you get stuff. How you get stuff, you go into receiving mode. But now you got to communicate. Anybody, any down economy, any time on planet Earth, the communicators won. <clears throat> Period. As much as, I don't know how y'all think about Hitler. I, I hope it's not, you know, as a saint. But he was a fantastic communicator. You know how great of a communicator you have to be to convince everybody that white, white skin and blue eyes and blonde hair? It's a superior race, and you look nothing like that. 
Isn't that fantastic you got to communicate? To rise up as a dictator doing democracy and keep it a democracy? And there are many great communicators. And a lot of the people that y'all call whatever, negative things, are great communicators. And right now, we, as the world, I'm not saying who, I didn't say where, we as the world are under some great communicators. Doesn't matter if you like them. They sure know how to communicate to their base, let me tell you. Yes. So I'm going to tell you how, so we need, well, we don't need. We are going after 6,940,000 customers in the next 760 days. But I don't want 6,940,000 customers, Patricia. I want I want 6,940,000 Patricias. There's a difference. Imagine having a bunch of people following you who want it just as bad as you do. How many of you can relate to, you always there for people, but they're never there for you? Jerome almost came to that camera. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Got to be everybody on this call. <laughs> Got to be everybody on this call. Antonio. Strong yes, friend. sir. Before you move strong forward. friend that Grace <laughs> talks about. Yeah, the strong <laughs> friend. <laughs> if you are. Um... tell you, you know, sometimes people that look like they have it all together on the outside. Oh, Lord, those are worse. Don't necessarily have it together, or it's taken a long time of scars. You know, I grew up in Southern Ohio, which is probably a little like Galveston, Southern Ohio. It's it's kind of Appalachia, coming from Cape Cod. Yeah. So, you know, they looked at my mom, who dressed like Nantucket, and, you know, then I kind of inherited what she, you know, but she ended up being a softball coach and, you know, took all the girls. My mom was real athletic and my dad coached. But I had that little girl, she dressed me up with ribbons in my hair and ringlets and dresses and all this stuff. And I just, you know, I didn't fit in. And I was really, really shy, very, very shy and quiet. Uh, but then I think I've told the story before I had psoriasis from head to toe everywhere and would be wrapped in saran wrap and took tar. They put tar all over me and, and it was very painful and I would hide that. I would wear clothes and it wasn't on my face. It wasn't on my hands, but everywhere else I was suffering and in pain and no one saw that. They just saw this cute little girl. And, you know, I got snubbed. I got snubbed. I wasn't in with the in crowd. I wasn't part of anything. And I just kind of ended up being a loner. And, and that's how I came to hang out with kids that were in pain and kids that were rejected and, and those sort of things. And so I struggled with all that. Plus, I was small. And no one would hire me for jobs. They said I couldn't reach, you know, the things at the pizza place. I wouldn't be able to get the boxes. They turned me down. Um, I actually could have gone to college. I didn't know this till after my college was all paid because of my size. I could have gotten, you know, grants for that, which is weird because, you know, I never wanted to project myself that way. So, you know, we all sometimes... We can look okay on the outside and the inside you're in pain. And, and that's why I think I've been able to help so many people along the way. And then when Phil and I met and his story and I felt his pain and struggle, and that's how we really first bonded because of the story. 
makes good sense. That makes yeah. good sense. Yeah, no. Well, you are a blessing to the world, Susan. And we, we gratefully appreciate you. And I had no idea that you was too short to get a job. <laughs> I about giggled over here. Jerome. I got business on. jobs instead. I uh-huh. I learned accounting and all and office stuff. And I, I ran an office in the summers when the lady took off to be with her kids. And I mean, I took over her job and I... You know, I I worked at this uh, lumber mill with all these loggers that would come in. And I would have to tally up all the logs and write them a check. And they would stand there looking over me while I was doing that. And, you know, it was rough. This was a rough place. And all these men, all these logging men coming in and out, in and out. And there I am right there with them. But they always respected me, and and I learned a lot about business and yeah, and training got, ground from human consultants. Yeah, it got so when they would pull in with the trucks, I learned the logs. I could look at it and pretty much determine how much their check was going to be by just wow. looking at the logs. And so I I did because I didn't get those kind of jobs. I got better jobs. Yeah. Um, because I, I forced myself into, you know, okay, I can't do that stuff. So what am I going to be able to do? Well, that's how God worked. Yeah. It's just, they won't give you this. I'll give you better this. How about that? So I was rejected in a lot of different ways. It wasn't mm-hmm. till the, a new guy came to the school and, um, that summer I was a majorette and he was, he ended up, they transferred him to be the basketball star and he was six, three and you know, he didn't know me and he didn't know what was going on. And we started talking and started dating and, and um, you know, we spent nine years together. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. yeah. So that, Amazing. that kind of turned things around a little bit for me. No, no. <clears throat> that's powerful. That's powerful. I'm glad to have heard all of it. I'm yeah. motivated now. Well, you know, it's like people think you're you're all that, and none of us all are. None of us are. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, let me give a shout out to Cynthia. Cynthia Colley is one of our newest Bureau of Dominant Speakers members. So we just want to give you a shout out and, and love on you upon this day. We are so grateful to have you here early in the morning. Jerome. I'm looking on, forward to her being on the call tonight. All right. It is. That's it. That is it. Jerome, we ready, man. We ready. Cause I'm about to put a boat. Not I am mute your mic. As y'all know Jerome. He's he, he said, hold on Antonio. Before you move forward, I heard it. He got something to say. No, when you made the comment about people always depending upon you. Um, but most of you on the call know about my mom passing, That's and right. um, so in, in relationship to that, um, I was on the call last night talking about regardless. Just you know, so y'all business. know, his mom passed this weekend, so this isn't like last year or something. He is yeah. she, and when she my not even in the ground yet. Okay, yeah. keep and going. When, and, and when my dad passed, my dad told my before he passed, he told my mom, if anything happens, Jerome's in charge. So something happened, and I took charge, and from A to Z, now she's gone, and I thought I was going to have to take the bail and run with it, but when I got to the house on Saturday, it was like my sister was running everything, and I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, I said, what do you need from me? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But I was still coming on the calls. So again, this morning, I know she's taking care of the arrangements with the film director and so forth. I'm on the call. If you notice, I've been in and out. She yeah. called me, and I wanted to, and I said, nope, got to get this. They, they looking for the 214 for my mother. Uh. And, and, and yes. And I said, mom doesn't have a 214. Dad has a 214. But because if they're going to bury her in the uh, military cemetery with my dad, you're going to need his 214. And it's like, okay, well, but I said, I said, I saw it the other day. I'm not sure where. And I said, but when I get off my call, I'll look for it and get with you. They call me back and they says, do you have a social security number? I says, I got the 214 because it's, it's in the area that I'm watching, doing this on. And I say, I got it for you. I say, he doesn't have a 214. He's got a service number because 
he was back in the Korean War. Okay. And I said, I said, I got it. And they were like, and then Keita, you know who she is. <laughs> My yeah, niece said, yeah, yeah, where yeah. you at? I'm going to come get it. So they were on the way to come get it now. But I told them I was going to bring it along with something else. And I said, nope, let them come and get it, Jerome. You stay on your call and learn how to make that money. Hello. That's it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Well, we stand with you, brother. You know we do. You know we do. We stand with you. Now, we're going after 6,940,000 customers, which at that moment will make this company, oh, man, I don't even know how to calculate net worth because I don't deal with it. So I don't even know what to tell you. You know, like I, I, you hear me, net worth. I can't eat net worth, Satish. It don't spread on the sandwich correctly. You understand? It? <laughs> so I don't even deal with it. But it, it what, what it will do is put us at three billion dollars cash a year or a month. One of those. Anyways, three billion is in there. You understand? Cash. It's either a month or a year, something like that. Who cares? Because who's complaining where the billion goes at? Anybody, if, if somebody had three billion, would you complain where it go at? If it go in a day, if it go in a month, if it go in a year, it's, it's all good. It's just, it's just, it's just go on, give it to me. I'll work it out from there, right? Yeah. Nobody cares where it's at. Nothing like that. But I'm not looking forward to just having those people. And I'm not looking forward to just having the money. What's the point of having the money if you can't do what you want to do with it? If you have the wrong company with the right money, you're still going out of business. You better ask Kodak. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's some wise stuff I just said. The right money with the wrong business and the wrong customers, you're going out of business. So we want the right people. We want the people, we want the customers that you can change with immediately. The customers who don't mind prototypes. The customers who, like Kiara, be cooking in the kitchen watching us. We, we want them folk. You, you, you can't find Kiara's. Especially in Delaware. She's like, this has got to be the only person like her in Delaware. I can't imagine <laughs> anybody else <laughs> from Delaware. I don't know. I don't know too much about Delaware. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. And you can have it. I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. Okay. I went back and I revisited. Well, the first thing I'm doing. As I told Deanna to interview certain people, where are we at, Deanna, on that? Give me, just give me a percentage. What's the percentage of done? Eighty percent. Eighty percent's not 80%. bad, but eighty percent. Sixty percent done. Twenty percent scheduled. Can I be done this week? Yes. Outstanding. That's that's I like results, Jerry. I, was I don't like that. It's, it's, it's all good. As long as I could be done this week, then I'm okay with that. I, my brain won't pop off and bleed out my ears. Okay, so I'll be good. So Deanna's crafting these stories because I'm highlighting people's stories because the only way I'm going to promote Rakeza is through story. I'm going to make this company the feel-good company of the world, right? So we'll be flying out to India just to shoot my Yuri story. Well, not during COVID. That's a little, a little different. Can't do it during COVID. You know, both India and America. Well, America's worse than right now. The problem is, okay, Grace, go and jump on your call. I'm, I'm done in five minutes anyway. When it comes to liabilities, cash flow is where it's at. That's true. That's true. So here's what I'm doing. Law say he coming to India too. He can't wait. He can't wait to walk barefoot in a foreign country anyway. He been doing that a long time. He's trying to do it again. You understand? He he can't wait. I want y'all to go buy this book. Joseph Campbell. He writes the book A Hero with a Thousand Faces. 
it was Joseph Campbell that understood and studied that stories have been around forever and all of our stories, every religious story, every folk lore, all of them have the same hero. It just has over a thousand faces. Huh. You're right, Susan. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Let me write that down. Yeah. Now, I'm taking your stories and I'm getting ready to make the whole company one big story. There's something called the hero's journey. Are you familiar with it? Then I will end this meeting with a video so you can be familiar with it. And then we're done. Just know, hold on real quick. Pulling it up. Just know that no matter what you do or are trying to do moving forward, you need to be able to do that forwardness with a story. But there's something Hollywood understands. When I was building this company, what I did, Steve, is I said, well, who forces people to sit down for two hours and they walk away saying, man, I wish it was longer. And I couldn't find nobody but Hollywood. It makes sense. When you think about it, it makes sense. And so I've been studying Hollywood for some years now. Maybe the second time I'm saying it out loud. And I understand something that many people don't understand. And it also what makes me successful behind the scenes. It also drives what I do and you don't even know it. It also tells you why I act the way I act on my little phone calls, okay? This is the hero's journey. I haven't updated this article since September 1st, 2019, but it is something I go to frequently. The hero's journey has 12 steps. Deanna, this is kind of like your epiphany story. Remember your, your epiphany bridge, how you teach that? And I say, I know it another way. You got 10 steps, I've got 12. Yep. All right, I've got 12 steps. Now, typically, your movie, yeah, I just how much, <laughs> typically a movie has three acts. It doesn't have to, but typically it does. And one is the hero's ordinary journey. The movie will spend a great significant part of the movie just telling you how ordinary the hero is Okay, so you can relate to that hero. The punchline here is y'all, and listen, if you gotta go, go ahead, but I am now dropping supreme esoteric knowledge. Esoteric means very few people know. And I'm also giving you the blueprint for what I'm about to do to the whole world. The punchline here is, there is something about the hero's journey that is innately, naturally in us, and we can't stop relating to it, no matter how hard we try. It's when Vanessa said, I am a reformed drug user, it's when you fell in love with her. It's when Les Brown said, I'm the dumb twin, it's when you fell in love with him. The next time y'all watch a movie, I want you to pay attention to the first few minutes. In the first five minutes, the director will show each character that you're going to relate to, and it's going to show you the disabilities and the downfall of the hero. The hero would be handicapped, or, or the hero, depending on what kind of movie, like if it's the, the movie, the, the math movie with the women, with the astronauts, you know, Hidden figures. hidden figures, hidden figures. They're women, they're black, that's a downfall, right? And they have to pick some things. You see all of that. And in the seeing of this, you will see that the hero is just like you. Oh, man. I need y'all to get that. 
I'm not going to be able to pull this off unless I show people that Jerry is just like you. I'm making a lot of sense right now. A lot of it. Jerry's just like you. And then here's what happens next. In the movie, this is movie breakdown. That's a, this is a, this say it's a 90 minute movie. This is a significant chunk. And then the second one, the call to adventure. So now we've got 38% of the movie being the hero's ordinary world and something bad happening to the hero. And then there's the assistance. Got to get the assistance for some 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 rabbi, some teacher, some sensei. Wax on, wax off. Right? It's got to be some sort of assistance from somebody. Some assistance from somebody. And then halfway through the movie or just before halfway, the hero must leave. And then the rest of the movie happens with trials and escapes, the crisis, and all this stuff here. Now, here's a breakdown of all this. Don't worry about this. All this is Googleable. Doesn't matter. Just know that I got plenty of it. All this is Googleable. Now, I write all my books this way. I teach all these classes this way. Every time you say, oh my God, Antonio, don't do that. That is on purpose because I need to continuously show you that I am not perfect. Do you understand? I can't stress this enough, but now I done started a company that is going to save the world, but I can't say I'm coming to save the world. No one will listen or they'll crucify me. That happened before too, by the way, just saying. So I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> I can't do that. So what I have to do is I have to say, you shared, yes, I did share something like this. I'm about to do it right now, Law. I'm about to, in two minutes, I'm going to share that same video. And then, and then, and then I'm going to end right there. I have to say, Patricia is an ordinary woman that start making extraordinary decisions every day. Oh. I have to say Steve was a regular person that made irregular decisions. And people are going to say, what happened? How? Man, I'm telling you, ATS. And it's going to be, ATS is the hub of if you are just like me. That's whoever story is being told. Come here. And we will make you a hero. That's the plan. I'm giving it to you. I'm, I'm giving you the plan. So now I'm going to make it make sense to you. The video clip is four minutes and 33 seconds. And then the meeting is over. So anyone who lasts it, there you go. little breakdown on TED Talk. Can you hear me? All right, good. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world. But the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. 
Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition, power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely. But let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey, Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well. You're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek and then do it all over again. All right, everybody, that's your esoteric knowledge for the day. That's what I'm getting ready to do. I hope you do the same thing with your company. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better, you can dominate. Y'all have a good one.